Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q3 and 9 months FI24 earnings conference call of PI Industries Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddharth Vangnikar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today on PI Industries Quarter 3 9 MFI 24 Earnings Conference Call. Today we have with us senior members of the management including Mr. Mayank Singhal, Executive Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Rajni Sharna, Joint Managing Director, Mr. Manikantan Vishwanathan, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Pashant Hegde, CEO Domestic, and Mr. Atul Gutta, CEO Exports. We are also joined by Mr. Anil Jain, MDPI Health Sciences. We shall commence the call with key perspectives from Mr. Singhal. After that, we'll have Mr. Manikantan share his views on the financial performance of the company. Thereafter, the forum would be open for interactive question and answer session. Before we begin, I would like to underline that certain statements made on today's call could be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the investor presentation shared with you earlier, and which is also available on the Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Mr. Singhal to share his perspectives with you. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. Thanks. A very good afternoon to all of you for joining the call today for a future earnings 24. <clears throat> over, over my remarks, I shall come over aspects of strategic and operating progress that we have made in the company. I am glad to report a good set of results for Q3. Let me briefly cover the highlights. PI has recorded an 18% growth in quarter three over the comparable period of last year. Paribita and PAC has shown a good improvement coming at 34% and 28% respectively. Recent times have seen industry dynamics and global geopolitical tensions, climate change, and create adverse impacts on the working pattern of Atkins. Industry, owing to its own imperatives, we have seen China offloading materials in global markets. Consequently, trade channels are yet at high inventory and the flow of products from manufacturers is therefore impaired. Certain geographies are more impacted than others internationally, but at an overall level, the general products are the most popular on the track for declining month and month. PI has stand apart as a unique business model owing to its robustness with a differentiated portfolio of molecules and exports, a range of brands comprising the specialized products, our respect for IPR and meticulous execution, and continuous investment in innovation for being the supportive pillars to our business model. The growth you are seeing in exports for us is a result of our focus in early stage patented molecules that are still growing in many countries and obtaining registration at several levels. We track the entire arc of growth from the beginning to maturity. Our track record of meeting global requirements of some of the largest products and IP holders over the, over the years. Our strength and mutual respect of the relationship we share. In fact, we are ranked among the top three CSM companies in the world and has truly mastered the complex operations involved due to the demonstrative capabilities in technology, advanced processes, our relationships with global innovators have grown very deep, both at the product sourcing level and also the process research and process innovation, where our expertise is on par. Over the years, we have supported the growth of advanced molecules of innovators and given a pipeline we have built, the cycle continues. It is a kind of natural virtuous cycle, replenishing itself with, with pipeline and products and new engagements. Our directed business is again well poised to tap potential of early stage molecules that are being launched by us as brands. Whereas in the space, we have seen subdued performance owing to monsoon deficit in the south, depleting reservoir levels, elevated inventory levels on row crops and price pressures. Our emphasis has been on driving higher quality of revenue with better margins. Our superior product mix and declined working capital management has contributed very well, which again is very unique to us. We have been deploying horticulture category as well as those brands have shaped up well. 
creating value for farmers or food investors across the geography. So, Chivago is the only horticultural specialist. We have nearly 60 brands. Biological and biodiversity have also grown strongly and has done well for us. We have, we have a portfolio of eight products. Two have been well intense over two decades, rest in the process of development and building phase. And we continue to expand this pipeline. As we look into the future in export, we have steadily been working towards diversifying our mix. Whereas growing is coming from molecules in the ad camp, we shall continue and, and we shall continue to come from there. We have grown our footprint well beyond ad camps. We have established a long capabilities in the high quality markets of electronic chemicals and other specialty chemicals. A significant growth is originating from new products. More than 50% growth during Q3 has come from here. Beyond this, we have visibility up to five new molecules, 50 new molecules in the R&D pipeline. The share of non echo molecules in the inquiries has significantly grown by 30%. The proportion of new active molecules that have a good runway grows ahead of them and we see high commercialization on account of for 30% of this commercialized going ahead. This will get commercialized in the future with each product giving us growth curves on its maturity. Similarly, on the domestic side, our strategies are introducing novel molecules with underlying performance. We launched five new products in the current fiscal year. Over the last few years, we have found wide acceptance and helped us mitigate the revenue decline in the industry. Our recent launcher brands have seen a healthy intake uptake from the insecticide, carrots and paddy, herbicide, ketsu, and newly baked to rice herbicide, fungicide, cadet for soybean and groundnut, and biofungicide, peeling for grapes and chilies. We have a robust pipeline over 20 products, both under registration development and will drive growth in the years to come. Our team is in intensely working on the field to handle old farmers in the nuances of right usage of the products, thereby generating loyalty and building brand demand. Recently, our range of bioregions side, we are very attractive and cutting edge. We've launched a brand called Amino Grow Active, which is met a good response. Bionutrients represent a growing category of products with farming. Moving on, our strategic objective, the devil's fund to pharma, has been achieved, and we're prioritizing the process of integration of the factors which will help of global consultants. PI Health Science is working towards a potent integration of CRO, CRDMO, API platform, which we call CRDMO, which is to deliver a comprehensive solutions to our clients. Work continues to enhance and modernize the setups, including capabilities and technological initiatives at both research and manufacturing locations in India and Europe. Investments are also being made towards building a strong resource base in order to support the need for the big pharma biotech clientele, thereby intensifying a new business development pipeline. We believe the power business is moving in the right direction and on path to build a future growth engine for PI. Whereas I am new to this earlier in my remark, PI structure in the business is stronger owing to the initiatives of science and technology. We truly proud of India as one of the only fully integrated act and company. We are the only integrated single site research and composting chemicals in this biological development process development to scale up under one roof at a global scale and number of more than 900 people at that support. Our investments include integrated single site center then Kapas, a world-class R&D setup, engaging over 800 scientists as mentioned, PhDs and 155 patents filed so far. There are a focus on unique building blocks that will give us opportunities across and lead us into newer capabilities and ultimately create in creating new business avenues. Over the years, the attributes have translated into stronger business patterns and deep and wide pipelines of yet to be launched in the marketplace. Now, just an update on the age, our belief of sustainability is a culture and rather than an obligation or passion, are defined by our purpose of reimagining the Indian planet. We have improved is S&P Global Score, a corporate system assessment, ranked to the 95th percentile as a well retained eco wide gold medal in the sustainable achievement with 98th percentile ranking. PI has featured in S&P Global Sustainable Yearbook for 2024, thus giving us a distinction mark amongst 
the best EHDF companies globally. Initiatives to uphold ESG and integrate it well within the planning and operating of the business. Thus, as we grow business, we are doing so with great responsibility. We continue to actively seek and evaluate new opportunities in an organic domain in line with the strategic and operating aspirations, complement the growth that seems to our business. The outlook for the year remains positive and we are on the path to delivery of guidance for performance in 24. This brings me to the end of my remarks. I would now like to invite Money Country to take this forward. And Money Country, thank you all for joining this call today and to be a part of our growth story. So over to you, Money. Thank you, Mr. Sindhav. Good afternoon to everyone on the call today. I have summarized the company's financial highlights for the third quarter index that December 2023. Please note that all comparisons are on a year-on-year basis and the put the consolidated financial performance. As Mr. Sindhav has shared, our performance demonstrates a differentiated approach to doing business and a sharp focus on keeping operating parameters in line with our objectives. To share the performance highlights, we will Q3 FI24. We reported a revenue of Rs. 18,975 million, a growth of 18% over the same period of last year. This was driven by growth in exports revenue by 23% to Rs. 16,300 million and 6% decline in domestic revenue to Rs. 2,665 million. Graph margin and EBITDA improved mainly on account of favorable product mix operating leverage and one-time impact of recovery of test material, contributing around 300 basis points improvement in EBITDA. Profit of the tax increased by 28% to Rs. 4,486 million, attributable to EBITDA growth and lower effective tax rate. Let me also cover OTM performance for FI24. OTM 31st December revenue was rupees 69,248 million, a growth of 20% over the same period last year. This was driven by solid growth in export revenues by 29% to rupees 48,000 million, which offset 7% decline in domestic revenues to rupees 10,979 million. Profit of attack improved by 38% to 13,120 million. Effective tax rate for YTM growth. With 11.56% due to growth in export revenue. Cash flow from operating activities increased 16% to Rs. 11,561 million and Rs. 10,889 million, excluding pharma. This was due to higher EBITDA and efficient working capital management. The trade working capital, in terms of number of days, has reduced by 10 days to 80 days compared to the previous year. Inventory levels also reduced in terms of days of sales to approximately 59 days to Rs. 12,743 million. Our balance sheet further strengthened during the year. Network increased to Rs. 84,508 million as on 31st December 2023. YDM CapEx stood at Rs. 9,001 million, including pharma acquired assets of Rs. 4,972 million and is in line with our plan. Surplus cash, net of debt, is Rs. 32,936 million as of 31st December 2020. Our balance sheet and cash flow have stood robust in line with clear financial strategy and discipline execution, thereby enabling a superlative performance. This concludes my opening commentary. I will now request the moderator to open the forum for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Aditya Jawara from Investec. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for the opportunity uh, and congrats on good set of numbers, especially in this challenging environment. Uh, my first question is if you can highlight that which are the new geographies where, you know, the product registration is still underway for pyroxysulfine, uh, that is number one. 
Number second, if you can, you know, highlight what is the pricing erosion we have seen in the markets like Australia and Argentina, where the product has become generic. Yeah. Aditya, can you please repeat your question because your voice sure. was not very clear. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. So this, uh, you know, one of our key products, pyroxysulfanes, uh, if you can highlight which are the key markets where the registration process is still on, uh, that is number one. I'll take the number two later, sir. Yeah, so there are uh, many countries, but uh, I hope you'll appreciate that uh, it is not uh, PI which is uh, doing this registration. It is the innovator company, and we may not have the, you know, detailed information, but we understand that there are several countries these registrations are in process. Sure, sir. So this, uh, how much pricing erosion so we have seen, you know, we will have some market intel uh, in markets where the product has become generic like Australia, Argentina. Again, uh, to be honest, we won't have the first-hand information. I mean, the market intelligence says that it varies from, uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent in the initial years. But again, this is not our first time information. In any way. Okay, okay. And sir, if you would like to highlight that, you know, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, some commentary on the CAPEX front. Uh, uh, so what kind of CAPEX intensity we should expect uh, in FI25? Um, and what could be your guidance uh, going into FI25, sir? Well, lots will also depend uh, on the progress of the pipeline, but we still maintain, you know, six to eight hundred crore kind of, uh, you know, capex that we will look at for organic uh, growth, expansion, and growth. Okay, so what about the guidance, sir? Have, growth. Uh, we will have more uh, clarity on this, uh, you know, maybe by the quarter four and. Okay, sir. So for final question, that you mentioned that your visibility is reasonably strong in the in the near to medium term, right, sir? For growth perspective. Sorry, sir, from growth perspective, uh, so you have not spelled out FI25 guidance yet. Uh, but from a near to medium term perspective, how is the visibility on growth, sir? Yeah, so we'll have a specific guideline again uh, at the end of fourth quarter. But yes, as of now, we sustain the we maintain our earlier, uh, you know, indications that we are confident of sustaining this growth momentum. Perfect, sir. That's good to hear, sir. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Ankur Perivar from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Oh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks and uh, congratulations for a good set of numbers. I hope my voice is audible. Your audio is not clear one, to us, Ankur. Uh, sir, it's better now? Hello? Yes. Yeah, is it better now? Yeah, thanks. Sir, thank you and, uh, you know, congrats on the on good set of numbers. Uh, my first question was uh, on the pricing cut. Uh, typically, you know, historically, uh, seeing that, uh, you know, across the innovator molecules or products that we have been working in, working on, what has been the worst case pricing cut that we would have seen historically? If you're talking about what, I mean, because so for we example, are working on both sides, on manufacturing also, on... No, on the CS, on the patented... So not really clear what is... On the patented CSM side, uh, you did allude it towards around 10 to 15 percent pricing cut that we have seen till now, uh, given the the product getting generic, uh, you know, in some of the key markets globally. Uh, no, this is an earlier experience. I don't think this was the question. The question was that what is our market intelligence of what is the kind of price um, reduction has happened in one of the market where product has gone there. There was Correct. no, I mean, I don't think the question was that what is the price cut that we have seen. No, no, not you have seen, not you have seen, the final product pricing was what I was referring to. Yeah. Uh, on the similar yeah. lines, uh, you know, historically, for any branded product, uh, patented product turning generic, 
what has been the worst case pricing cut uh, we would have seen a broad range would be helpful so let me add it there you know there's nothing like worst case or best case i mean you if you look at the industry and being in the segment you know this better it's quite a standard approach of why price and volume curves play up in the industry so there is nothing which can really say worst case what is worse and what is good again as you know the volume that they pick up costs also change so the price is determined by the scenario in different products in different segments so sorry to interrupt your voice is breaking ladies and gentlemen please stay connected the line for the management dropped participants please stay connected while we rejoin the management back to the call We have the line for the management reconnected. So go ahead. Yeah, so as I was mentioning, you can look at, I mean, there is no one to say this is the way it is. There's a spectrum of price cuts, and price cuts are dependent on various. But I think we broadly mentioned what is the segment. And that's more in the end of the pipe of the sales prices. Yeah? As the innovator is the one who buys the prices in the market. Sure, sir. Uh, fair enough. Uh, second question on, uh, you know, the growth part. Uh, while uh, uh, we, we are not guiding anything in particular this quarter, but, uh, you know, directionally you did mention we will maintain the growth momentum. Uh, trying to understand from a new product ramper perspective, since we have been pretty, you know, reasonably aggressive in terms of our launches over the last two, three years, any of the products across agri and non-agri side which are seeing a good ramp up from the client perspective on the CSM side? Yeah, so as, as we have also indicated that, for example, in this current quarter, there is significant uh, growth which has been contributed by the new products, uh, you know. Those have been commercialized in uh, Actam as well as in other specialty chemical space, you know. More than, more than I think, 60% um, growth has come from these products. And likewise, I mean, the um, remaining... I mean, the fourth quarter as well as coming year, we are uh, we have a good visibility of many of these new projects uh, contributing to the growth growth of the export business that we are talking. Sure, that's helpful, sir. And uh, lastly, if I may, uh, on the on the domestic market, uh, any timelines or thoughts, uh, you know, on the revival or growth uptick uh, that you can share off? Thank you. Prashant. Yeah, so, <clears throat> domestic market, uh, we basically expect the challenges to continue in Q4 as well uh, uh, because of the external conditions which we have seen uh, at this point of time. However, our new products have uh, really done well even in the domestic uh, market, both in whatever which we have seen in Q3, especially on chili and fruits and vegetables, that was the major uh, focus crop as well as even on wheat. Okay, great, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you and uh, all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Madhav Marza from Fidelity International. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I had a couple of questions. The first one was, um, <clears throat> given whatever changes have happened, uh, or like rather, rather whatever slowdown we've seen in the global ACM space, um, has there been any change in uh, in our engagement with our clients in terms of uh, new products, or have you seen any clients saying that, you know, we want to go back to China now uh, versus uh, sourcing from the larger Indian uh, CMO companies? Has there been any discussion uh, of that sort? Well, frankly, we have not seen any uh, change in our engagement. In fact, these engagements have only gone uh, deeper with, uh, with the clients and the customers, strategic partners that we are dealing with. In any case, um, as, as we explained earlier, we focus on early stage uh, uh, molecules. And in those kind of molecules, uh, 
you know, what is currently happening globally, the kind of headwinds that we are seeing in generics and commodities, and those are not the kind of um, situations that we are seeing in those molecules. And therefore, I mean, clients conveying or thinking of going back to China or to other um, uh, geographies for sourcing is not the, 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 the situation that we are seeing or facing. And our engagement remains at the same level, rather it is going deeper with, with our global partners. Understood, understood, Bodhid. And my second question was the slightly more basic one, like in the pharma uh, piece, uh, when we talk about uh, the kind of um, projects that we want to do with the uh, biotech or big pharma customers, uh, is it basically doing uh, research for them at phase one, phase two, phase three, uh, kind of a stage or what kind of projects are we doing? If you could give some more sense around the business model here, it would be very helpful. Sorry, it's a very basic question, but just wanted to understand better. So very clearly, the business model is that of a CR or contract research services, right? Supporting early stage discovery services for innovators. Got it. So then the growth basically comes from uh, like sort of engaging with them at stage phase one, phase two, and then as the molecule progresses through, we scale up the business. Is that how we should think about it going on? Yes. And as you know, this is a long gestation period business. Absolutely. Yes, that's Absolutely. how it starts. That takes its own time. And to remember, Jerry, Jerry, the PR was doing the same for this ad business, we are focusing on the innovative pipeline. Perfect. Got it. And uh, anything that you can share in terms of... Uh, uh, like any specific, how many big pharma clients we're engaging with or how many biotechs we're engaging with, any color on the business as it stands today would be helpful. You know, some of these are under confidential agreements that you would understand because it's all in innovative space. So yes, we are working with a few and as you would appreciate if we just started, it would build in the capabilities and then we're going to be looking to expanding our platforms and customers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lionel Sumit from Codex Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for uh, giving the opportunity. So my first question was uh, relating to the one-off gains uh, that we have seen in 3Q. So how much, uh, I mean, quanti in uh, quantity terms, how much was the one-off gain in 3Q? Uh, Your audio was not at all clear to us. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes. I wanted to know how much was the one-off gain in the uh, 3Q, in the recent quarter. Okay, okay. Uh, this was uh, pertaining to the recovery of the theft material, and the amount was close to 70 crore. And okay. the cost so, related to that was, since the cost related to that was already, um, you know, captured in the previous quarter, so this is the one-time gain, and this is what we have highlighted also in our communication, that close to 300 basis point of the bit size on account of this one-off uh, item. Uh, but sir, in 2Q, we had mentioned that the uh, items was uh, lost in transit was worth uh, 410 million. So uh, how did we reevaluate uh, this to 700 million? That was cost. Because in the previous quarter, we had accounted for the cost, no? Okay. 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 Thank okay, you. Sir. The next question is from the line of Nathan Nagaral from Dime Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. <laughs> sir, on your guidance for this FY24, uh, sir, we've earlier talked about 80 to 20 percent growth for the agrochem business in FY24. When I look at the numbers, we've done about 15 percent for the nine months, sir. So we Nathan, hold on sorry to interrupt you. Your audio is not clear at all. Can you please speak through the handset? Just give me a second. Hello, is this better? Yes, thank you. Sir, I was saying on the FY24 guidance, uh, we talked about an 18 to 20 percent growth in the agrochem business for FY24, if, I, if, if this is correct. For nine months, we've done 15 percent. Uh, sir, how should we look at the full year, uh, you know, more towards uh, the lower end of the guidance? Yeah, we have, uh, we had indicated close to 18 to 20 percent kind of growth overall, okay, in the uh, previous uh, quarter. 
And obviously, the domestic uh, business, as I explained earlier by Sushant, we will have to see how things pan out in the last quarter. But we are still confident, uh, given the visibility, that we'll be able to still achieve the, the original guideline of 18 to 20 percent. And, and to be on a safer side, we will say that, yes, on the lower end of this guideline. And so just to clear, make it be clear, this is only our guidance is only for the aggregate part of the business, right? No, I think it goes for overall business. Including the pharma fees? Yeah. Okay, sir. And so secondly, uh, for the quarter on the gross margin, even if we make the adjustment for, uh, you know, the one-off item that you talked about, uh, I mean, the gross margins are, are higher than, uh, you know, than the previous sort of levels. Anything has changed sir, in this quarter for uh, for the gross margins? Uh, and how should you look at the sustainable number for this gross margins for the business? Yeah, so we basically we focused on uh, product mix rather than the volume, particularly in the domestic uh, business. Okay, where uh, I think uh, the the uh, there were always there was always choice of uh, you know kind of chasing the volumes um, by 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 looking at uh, you know some liberal uh, working capital norms and also pricing because the price competition was there. But we always focused on quality of revenue and, uh, you know, a positive or a favorable product mix. And that is the key contributor to this improvement in the Vita margin, apart from the one-off that we have seen. Even, even in our export, we have seen that because of introduction of uh, growth of new products, as I was explaining earlier, that has also contributed contributed an improvement in the in the gross margin as well as the beta margin. So going forward, yes, I mean in terms of the beta margin, we we, we believe that uh, around 25, 26 percent should be a sustainable level. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek Rajamani from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, just one clarification before I ask my two questions. Uh, you'd mentioned earlier that over 60% of the growth in this quarter has come from the new products. Am I correct? Yes. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, just related to that, the first question was, uh, you know, would it be possible to share what the contribution of these new products would be uh, as a percentage of your overall portfolio today? And where do you see this going, say, by the next two years? Well, I'm afraid we'll not have this in front of us. But yes, this, this quarter's growth was more than 60% contributed by this set of products. Uh, sure, sir. And just one clarification here. When you say new products, that would mean the products that you've been working on, say, in the last maybe one, two years? Would that be a fair yeah, statement? Last three years. Okay, great. And so the second question was, uh, you know, uh, just in terms of the broader industry challenges that we've been seeing uh, with respect to the acting space generally, uh, are these new products not getting affected in a big way? Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, that is because of the, you know, differentiated portfolio that we have been explaining that we are into early stage, uh, you know, patented molecules or proprietary molecules, which are not, I mean, um, I would say mature products as of now. They are still growing. <laughs> they are also getting, getting registered in newer countries as, as uh, they are growing. So it is quite natural that these, uh, there is natural growth in these products year on year. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you very much, and all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Avendus Park. Please go ahead. <coughs> Vishnu, may I request to unmute your line and go with the question, please? The line for the part has been dropped. We'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Hello, good evening, and uh, thank you very much. So in the pharma business, you have indicated uh, 350 million of development expenditure here to date. 
So, can you explain what is the nature of these development expenses and what is the kind of run rate you should expect, say, in FY25 and 26? And when do you expect uh, uh, this to kind of you know, reach a steady state? And how much will that be? Well, the, the development spend is in terms of our, uh, augmenting resources in R and D, in business development, in in uh, managerial, uh, you know, commercial areas. Uh, the development spend is also in terms of um, you know setting up uh, new systems and processes wherever there is a scope, um, which we have found during the integration of these different, uh, you know, acquired assets. Um, the development spend is also towards um, a lot of, uh, you know, infrastructure improvement that we have made or we are making right now. So this is broadly the nature of the development spend. Now, specifically what will happen in 25, 26, we are still in the process of, uh, you know, kind of consolidating and uh, also completing this integration process. Maybe in next couple of quarters uh, is the time that we will have uh, more clarity and also clear visibility of, uh, you know, scale up of uh, this, this newly acquired businesses. Yeah, okay. So on the uh, balance sheet details you have given, under pharma assets and liabilities, can you share the current assets and current liabilities in pharma if it's possible? Yeah, that we can share maybe on the sidelines. Okay. These are numbers that uh, you can always um, sure. get from our team financing. Yeah. So in terms of the pharma business, there is improvement in terms of your revenue and your, you know, if you um, adjust for the uh, index, uh, there's, there's improvement in the EBITDA. And before development expenditure, EBITDA margins are 16%. So uh, how do you see the revenue run rate you know, for the next uh, three to four quarters? And uh, uh, yeah, before development expenditure, what is the kind of EBITDA margin you would expect, say, by end of FY25 and 26? No, that's what I explained, that uh, while we can certainly, uh, you know, give you some answer, but you will have, rather, we will also have a much better visibility of this scale-up and, uh, you know, um, improvement coming through in next couple of quarters. So maybe by end of uh, next quarter, we will have a much better visibility of what is the revenue scale-up and the margin profile that we should be targeting. But just to answer your uh, question in uh, broad terms, as we have also indicated in past, that eventually post this uh, you know development phase of a couple of years, we would surely expect the the EBITDA margins etc to be on the similar lines as what we see today in PI. Okay. So one last thought on the CSM business. Uh, so this entire 800, 900 crores of capex will be on CSM. So uh, while you have in the past said you should not possibly look at the asset turn, but where are these investments going in terms of developing your capabilities? And eventually, what is the kind of you know incremental growth and revenue one can expect based on this sort of capex here over the next two years? Yeah, so the the the, the cap tax organic growth cap tax is mainly going into capacity expansion and also some of these uh, new technologies, capability building that we are um, you know uh, investing in R and D and kilo pilots and all that. Um, the kind of uh, potential is the similar the asset terms as you see today are more than two two point two five. So we would surely expect a similar kind of uh, asset terms to continue in future as well for this business. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll join back with you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Amanat from Ministry of Finance of Oman. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, are you audible? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sir, I just you know, wanted to have a clarification on those news items which uh, came to the entire media a uh, month and uh, a half back relating to uh, some competition in the China is building up a uh, huge capacity uh, for the product which you are mainly dealing in. 
and uh, uh, and also your main client somewhere in uh, Japan is given a guidance of very lower growth of their final output for which you are supplying the input. Uh, any comment or clarification you would like to give because you might have seen this one particular news has impacted your seller price uh, quite uh, vigorously. Uh, if you wanted to give certain clarification uh, that uh, how you see uh, these news items impacting your business, it will be helpful for the entire uh, investment community. Sure. Uh, in fact, we had uh, uh, given a clarification uh, to this news item, if you recall, immediately after that uh, news came. Okay, But I'll again, for the interest of uh, the investment community and analyst, uh, analysts, I'll again repeat. Uh, so yes, uh, as we know that in this industry, products will eventually go generic. Okay, and same way, this particular uh, product in subject is also surely go generic. Uh, the, the, the solo product, the, the patent is already expired in few countries. And in other major countries, it will expire in next few years. Okay, the, the product will go off with it in next few years. But the important point to understand here is that in most of the developed countries, the ultimately the, the, the product which has been sold in the market is the formulation, the combination product, combination formulation product. And most of these combination products have a significantly longer patient life than next few years, okay? So while the, uh, the, the solo product, the AI product uh, patent will expire, say, next few years, the formulations and the combination formulations, their patent um, life will be there for next several years after that. And therefore, the impact of the product generalization, while it will be there in the countries, the product has gone generic or will go generic in next few years, but in the major market, because of the um, patent uh, protection of these uh, combinations and formulations, the impact is not going to be as significant as was uh, kind of uh, articulated in that new item. This is the first point. The second point is that uh, this news item also articulated about the capacity build-up which is happening um, in China with uh, some of these companies, etc. Uh, again, this is another point that, uh, you know, we have always heard this news um, of, about capacity, but again, there is certainly going to be a timeline of capacity building, and since the market uh, opportunity for the generic would be limited because of the first point that I explained. We will have to also see that eventually what is the kind of capacity which will come in play in next uh, several years. The third important point for us to also appreciate is that while yes, um, products go generic uh, or off patent and many generic uh, players come, but this is also true that when products go generate and many players come, the market also grows, the ultimate market, okay? And this particular molecule that we are talking is into certain segments, which is a multi-billion dollar segment, and this molecule is still six, seven hundred million. So the limited, limited point is that there is huge potential for growth as, as uh, we believe is there for this molecule in years to come, even when there will be generic competition. And we being one of the, you know, major supplier, manufacturer for last now almost uh, eight, nine years, we strongly believe that 
um, there will be a very strong position that uh, we as a company will have. Okay, so that that is the fourth point. The fifth, another very important point for us and uh, also the analysts and investors to appreciate is that PI is not one product or one molecule company. Okay, as as we have already explained few times that PI is. Um, a company with the diversified portfolio when you talk about our domestic business as well as our export business. In export, today we have more than 2022 20, products. Every year, five to six products are getting commercialized. And these products are now driving growth, you know, um, for, for the business and the company. Even in this quarter, more than 60% is contributed by some of these new projects which were commercialized in last two, three years. And going forward also, the growth will be driven by many of these newly commercialized projects, and many of them are actually non XM projects. So with our diversified portfolio, uh, we are confident that, that, that uh, you know, the whole uh, revenue risk or the margin risk which was articulated uh, in that news item is not, uh, I mean, it's a bit a exaggeration of the real uh, risk that we see. I hope this answers your question. Yeah, thank you very much for this elaborative answer. It's very, very helpful. Now the things are quite clear. Uh, so my second question is respect to your diversification towards this pharma business. Uh, as your results show that uh, the growth is quite uh, quite going uh, quite robust, uh, just to get an idea, how quickly you have a plan to make this pharma business uh, quite a uh, um, quite a bigger part of the total revenue pie. So at the moment it is uh, quite small. Uh, without going to the very detailed uh, guidance, which you may not be able to give. Just to give an idea, this diversification drive, which you just started a few years back, how quickly it will, it could get a momentum to make certain material difference at your uh, profitability uh, level. Right, that this drive of diversification, we have been working for uh, some time, okay? Um, in our exports, uh, as, as uh, we were explaining earlier, that already, you know, close to uh, 30 to 35 percent of our new inquiries and uh, new projects that we are commercializing are coming from non xm space. You know, this is the diversification we are talking. And on top of it, this pharma diversification will also add to our overall diversification and, uh, you know, kind of um, balancing the overall business um, segmentation and business uh, growth. Uh, our, our aspiration is in the next four, five years, 25% of our company's revenue should be from non xm space, which, which obviously which includes our pharma as well as a portfolio of non XM in our CSM export. So that is our objective, and we are progressing um, in that direction. So far, uh, we have a good confidence the way we are progressing. But yeah, this is the overall objective we have. So this 20, 25% contribution by how many years, sir? Three years, four years? Four to five years, as I said. Uh, four to five years. Uh, so the last one, a little uh, smaller part, uh, because of this rate C uh, related problem and the shipping disturbance which is happening, uh, are your company are getting impacted uh, due to this happening, which is uh, which can uh, which can creating problem for the transportation and exporting to the US site? So there is certainly some impact uh, in some of the shipments to Europe and US. Yes, there is some impact, um, and accordingly, you know, the the uh, supplies are being planned, the costs are being uh, obviously costs have increased in some of these shipments. 
which have also been uh, discussed and accordingly uh, shared with our customers. But yes, there is short answer is there is certainly some impact. So the incremental costs uh, relating to this, are, uh, will you be able to pass on to the customer or it will add on to your expenditure? No, in most cases this will be passed on because this is the general understanding we have with our uh, customers. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Centrum Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, so first question is, uh, generally I understand that we have uh, calendar year contracts. So when we had uh, our negotiations uh, during the last few months, uh, how has been the mood from the global uh, agrochem players in terms of the uh, volume lift up for this uh, calendar year. So are there any delays that we are experiencing or they are still in wait and watch mode? Uh, any uh, comments on that? Thank you. Well, that varies from uh, product to product, but in general, I would say we have not seen any significant uh, change. Um, the kind of products that we are working and, uh, you know, operating with our, our uh, global customers, we have seen uh, a good momentum and, uh, you know, effort on concluding, finalizing the businesses for next uh, campaigns or next year. Sure, uh, got that. The uh, so second question is on pharma bit. Uh, there are three, three sub questions. One is the uh, the one time development expenditure. Is it over or will it continue? Uh, the second thing is uh, in terms of the EBITDA and EBIT difference. It seems that there will be interest cost. Uh, so how do we justify given that we have uh, cash on our books? Uh, why this interest is being paid? And the third thing is. Uh, we have also shown the segmental results for last year, same quarter. So what was the pharma segment uh, during that time? Thank you. So regarding your first question, yeah, development spend may continue for maybe a quarter or so uh, because we are still in the process of, uh, you know, trying to optimize things and, um, you know, also coming out of uh, the integration uh, process, whatever changes, improvements that we are uh, seeing. So yes, that, that process will continue for next uh, one or two quarters. Um, regarding your uh, second question, I mean, I think it would be good if you connect with our finance team on these, um, you know, finance line items. Of, uh, that would be good. Um, what was your third question, please? Uh, sir, last year, same quarter also, we have given uh, the bifurcation in terms of segmental data. So last year, I understand we did not have uh, pharma. So what this particular uh, negative event is uh, particularly we're talking about? So last year, third quarter, we had no pharma. So that is the reason that the impact that we have seen this year and we have already considered that how much is the growth of um, you know, if you see our communication investment uh, presentation, investor presentation, there we have already indicated that how much is close to 10% is coming from, uh, you know, pharma exports and the rest, 13% is coming from our XMS. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, and uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Lana Vishnu Kumar from Avendas Fast. Please go ahead. Thanks for time, sir. Sir, over the last three years, uh, we've more or less doubled our CSM with limited capex. I mean, annualizing, as you know, on 300, 400 crores. Uh, going forward, as we uh, look for a similar run rate of growth, is this the capex similar numbers or uh, we have maxed out uh, wherever efficiencies can uh, and we need to probably invest uh, a bit more capex? Just some understanding on this. Uh, I'm not... To show on your number of three four hundred crores, I think it would have been more because you know what happens that uh, there is always a lead and lag in uh, capex investment and the revenue coming out of it. So whatever revenue growth that you would have seen in last few years, 
has uh, also come from the investments or capex that we would have made maybe two years back. And, and I recall that we made a significant investment in two, three years, you know, uh, earlier uh, to two years. Okay. But having said so, yes, I mean, there, was lot, there were a lot of initiatives uh, that we had taken to, to improve the throughput of the existing facilities, on a continuous basis, um, I think in the last couple of years, every year 10 to 15 percent uh, capacity enhancement we have made through, through you know, improvements uh, in our capacity throughput. Um, going forward also, as I was indicating to the earlier participant, we anticipate uh, 6 to 800 or 800, close to 800 odd pro kind of uh, every year uh, to keep uh, investing or in enhancement of capacity while we would surely be working on further throughput improvement. Some of these technologies such as um, uh, flow chemistry, etc., we are already kind of commercializing few projects and I believe that that will also help us further improve our overall, uh, you know, asset terms in this business. Maybe, uh, Atul, you may want to add something to what I've already said. Yeah, yeah. so <clears throat> I think the major focus is on the investment in the technologies in coming years. And of course, we have been continuously working on our capacity uh, utilization of our existing assets by way of improving the efficiency plan. And that's where 10 to 15 percent capacity is being improved every year basis. Understood, sir. Sir, uh, on a, one of the previous part participant question on margin, you highlighted that uh, we we'll probably settle around 25-26 on EBITDA margins. Uh, this quarter, if you look at the gross margins, there seems to be some significant improvement on the gross margins. And obviously, our overhead investments is probably led to a slightly muted or uh, slightly lower uh, EBITDA as compared to what the gross margin is. So, looking ahead, when you say 25-26, you, you expect some pricing cuts from the customers as you go forward in the next year, or uh, the investments and overheads will keep you at 25-26? Because optically, it looks like uh, probably this number can be even more at the current gross level. Um, nothing, I mean, uh, we, we don't, uh, you know, kind of anticipate any cuts or something, but, you know, it is also to do with product mix. It is also to do with development spend that uh, we believe we would be making not only into um, pharma space, but even in uh, agri, agri input space, uh, these new verticals that we are building, such as biologicals and others. So, yes, I mean, um, I would say um, it would be it would be good to kind of uh, assume 25, 26% rather than be quite speculative basis one quarter or six months kind of results. Understood, sir. And just one final question on the tax rate guidance if we can give for this year and next year. I mean, next year rather. Money? Yeah, uh, this year will be around uh, 14 to 15% for the year. Kind of thing. Next year we have the working on the thing. Um, maybe similar rain, but we need to confirm that. Maybe next quarter. Yeah. Sir, this is this twenty five percent normative rate. When would probably be having the tech, the, the, the delta from fourteen to fifteen? Will you catch up over the next two three years, or this fourteen fifteen will continue for at least a couple of years? It will continue uh, at least for uh, one more year. But uh, as we, as I said, we need to confirm that with the uh, other competition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I'll now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining uh, on this call. We really appreciate uh, your interest and your support in this uh, growth journey of PI. Thank you so much. And have a good day. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of PI Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.